How you guys doing today? Yeah. Good? Good. good, getting closer. Almost to game day, so um, we've had a good week. You know, kids really came locked in on Tuesday, and you know, I thought you know Sunday was kind of uh, you know, I don't know if they felt it, but um, our our scout team did an outstanding job getting our guys prepared. Um, we're obviously deeper in, in our scout field. Uh, so I think we're rolling two defenses out there for our offense, and same thing on the offensive scout team. So they did a great job preparing us this week, and um, you know, we'll find out what we got uh, Saturday. You know, four o'clock. Uh, with the University of Massachusetts. Uh, expect a good football team to come in here. Expect them to come in and play the best game they p- will play all year. Uh, they'll be motivated. They haven't played for a long time and only got four games in last year, so I'm sure they're excited to play, and um, we're, we're excited as well. So, questions? I know you talked about you know, being happy to not have to have a mask and be, you know some of the parts of your job that the pandemic has affected. How, how much are you and, and this team looking forward to running out of that tunnel with a – Fans in the stands and the band and the cheerleaders on the sidelines and kind of all the things that, that coming out for the national anthem. Yeah. You know, we're excited. It just it just feels like a whole new year. Last year was, you know, one of the weirdest years you'll ever ever find. And and um, you know, I think it's going to be fun. Everything. I mean, just the the pageantry of a real football game. You know, we missed it a year ago. We were having scrimmages in empty stadiums, and um, it's going to be great to have fans there. Uh, there'll be a lot of excitement. Uh, guys will have to control them themselves. It's been a year since they really had some good crowds here in Heinz Field and, um, you know, it's, it's something to look forward to. What was your reaction to the gift that was announced this morning and what was Mr. Bickle's message to the team? You know, his message to the team was, uh, you know, just take care of the details and he's behind us 100% and obviously, you know, Chris Bickle, you know, um, the reaction was, you know, something I've known for, you know, a month or so, maybe I've known since the summer. Uh, he's a guy we've built a relationship with for a long time, and he's a football guy, um, and uh, and he, he loves his program. So it's a, it's an amazing gift. We're thankful. Um, our entire team wrote him a thank you note a week ago, um, a personal handwritten thank you note, because uh, we knew this day was coming, and he was he was awesome. Um, and you know he, he's he's like the head coach of his his company, and he's had a ton of success. Uh, he's done it the right way, and um, you know our kids you know realize how important that is, and. Uh, it's a great gift and it's something that we're thankful for. We talk- in the press release, it's a half of that gift is going to be used immediately. In what, in what tangible ways do you see that being used? Um, you know, we won't get into what it, you know, for whatever we need to, to get done. And there's some things, some projects we've got on the line. We won't get into it right now because then you guys will be like, why didn't it happen sooner? Uh, we're working things, uh, work, working the things out. One of the things we'd like to do is expand the weight room, I guess. But let's talk UMass football. And, and Chris Bickle, and, and it, it, let's not worry about where it's going right now. But we'll get to that. We, we talked to Charlie the other day, and he said, with UMass having so many transfers, that you guys were going back and looking at different things. To a certain point, I mean, how far back do you go and scout, and is it too much at some yeah. times? It can be too much, but it's, it's it's never enough. I mean, you know, you can go back as far as you want. We went back to, you know, Walt Bell was at uh, Maryland. His last, you know, stop there uh, was at Maryland. And uh, he was the offense coordinator calling the play. So you look at the similarities of what he was doing at Maryland. Went back and watched, you know, a few games there. You know, spent a lot of time studying Michigan State uh, 2016 game um, where, you know, you're seeing the same concepts show up uh, that they do there. Some little variations as far as where the tight end is. Um, so we're going back, you know, pretty deep and looking at what kind of, you know, four games last year they didn't have a – you know, even to, you know, desperation play at the end of the game, what are they going to do? Are they going to be a three-by-one set? Are they going to be two-by-two? What's their go-to when they need a big play? Um, you know, we know we're going to see a bunch of, you know, uh, tight end, you know, shoots kind of like Miami did to us. Uh, we know we'll see some of those, so we've got to cover those tomorrow. And um, they'll, they'll, they'll do a bunch of different stuff. They came out with a muddle huddle against Michigan State, so they will throw everything at us that they can, you know, hoping for a big play. Uh, they, they struggled last year. How do you make sure you get your guys' attention? Well, I think, you, you know, I think they're focused. I think, you know, you have to you find that out during the week. You know, where are they serious? Um, is that Bickle calling you? <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously you find out in game day, we'll know after the game, you know, at the press or afterwards how locked in they were. But I see a locked in team like they were last year at Austin P. Uh, our guys were focused and um, I, I sense the same maturity right now out of our guys. You know, they'll be ready to go and, and so will UMass. So, um, you know, not knowing what you're getting, I think that's that's a good thing for our team, not knowing. Um, it's going to be adjustments, you know, from the first snap to the last snap of what they're doing, how they're doing it, who's their personnel, who's that guy, who's in the slot receiver spot, 
um, you know, who's, who's, you know, at tailback, you know, who's kick returns, you know, what's their Mike linebacker look like. I mean, all those things. I think, uh, you know, it'll be, you know, a great game and we'll have to be, be locked in. What do we see from some of the guys who didn't play a lot last year because of injuries like, uh, you know, Akaba, Lucas, uh, Wendell? Like, how have you seen them kind of getting ramped up to say, okay, this is, like, I'm, I'm ready to go again this year? You know, we've seen it since the beginning of August. I mean, Lucas has had a very, very solid camp, and we're looking forward to seeing what he does on game day. You know, Hava played quite a bit last year before he banged up his hip a little bit, and uh, Hava's had a great camp. I mean, he's, he's a guy that uh, we expect to see a bunch of. Damari Mathis, another guy that, uh, you know, uh, hasn't played for a year, uh, but has gotten better almost every practice, if you can imagine that. I mean, he was a little rusty, I thought, in the spring, uh, but there was no rust when fall camp started, and he's been he's been good. When you put up. I remember you said, uh, I think it was early spring when you guys got back. Demar was like tackling people when you guys were in shorts. Yeah. So he kind of like settled back. In. He's definitely settled back. We only, we only had nine days in, in tackling drills, so he was he was good. And I, I think this football team, you know, has done a, as good a job as anybody, or as any team we've had here since I've been here, as far as just staying up and keeping guys healthy. We're we're healthy going into this opener. When you put an OR on a depth chart on a Monday, how does it affect uh, a player's practice throughout the week with, with two guys maybe fighting for that same spot on Saturday? You know, um, I hope it affects them. I hope, you know, they're looking at it going, you know, am I going to be the guy getting the, the reps or not? And, and uh, you know, the one thing we just say is, hey, you're going to have opportunities. When you get out there, you know, you earn your opportunities on game day. Um, you get 10 reps, you get 20 reps, you get 30 reps. Show us what you have on game day. And that's where the competition begins and ends. Did you see that in practice this week with some of those guys? No doubt about it. I mean, um, you're always going to – we see it every day. I mean – you know, when you guys see the one depth chart, we see a depth chart every day. We go through a depth chart every day of where they are. You know, first game pads, usually after that first scrimmage, there's a lot of movement as far as, you know, just moving guys in front of people. And uh, our coaches will go back and watch today and still go, you know, this guy had a really good Thursday, this guy didn't. You know, and we'll base things off of that. The UMass um, left tackle, I think, has been to four schools. Do you go back and look at all three of those? Which depth chart are you looking at, Jerry? Uh, you're right, you're right. Yeah. But the latest depth chart was, you know, chaos, I thought. I mean, the latest depth chart, which I wouldn't believe, had like four redshirt freshmen starting on the old line. And, and uh, but I, I expect the North Texas, you know, kid to be probably starting at left tackle, and the Michigan transfer started at right tackle. Right tackle. Well, but this, my point is, this guy's been to four schools. Whether he's got to right tackle, doesn't matter. Right. But do you go back and look at all three of those other places where he played. Not all three. You look at the latest one. I mean, mm -hmm. and try to talk to whoever you can just about you know what is what is what's his mental makeup. That's the nice thing about transfers. Is, is you can go, you know, you can backtrack, not only watch tape, but go back and talk to people that you know at those different institutions and say, hey, how is he there? What, what did he do? Uh, we know enough people that to just get an idea. But, you know, whatever they said in the past doesn't matter. These kids, you know, they move on through the portal. They get new opportunities. They get new coaches. They get a fresh start. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're obviously, you know, power five guys, whether it's, you know, corner from North Carolina or uh, tailback from Rutgers. They all have another opportunity to come, you know, make plays and, and they all want to play in the NFL. I don't care if you're at UMass, Pitt, or Alabama. They all have, you know, aspirations to play in the league, and, and uh, they want to come show what they have in Heinz Field Saturday. The, the, all those transfers must add extra time to, to your preparation. How much time do you guys put in your know, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Wednesday night? Well, I mean, a, a lot. I mean, you're you know you're trying to do as much homework as you can, uh, whether it's fielding phone calls from somebody that you know or. Uh, or, you know, watching tape. But we got people's jobs that are to, hey, get us a tape on these guys. I don't need to see 100 plays. I need to see the 50 plays he's in. And some guys, there's more tape than others. So. What kind of camp did Adrian Davis have? Because, you know, a lot of talk about Izzy and, and Sneed and Rodney. Uh, right, camp. right. Um, you know, Adrian had a great camp. I mean, I think he got better every day. He really did. I mean, um, you know, he's mature. With, you know, you're not known if you're going to get a three down front or a four down front. He's a guy that you feel comfortable going in there, regardless of what he sees of, of in the run game. You know, reading the right guy based on the front. Uh, if it's a, if if you're throwing the ball protection wise, I mean, he's just a, he's the most mature guy in that room, and I think he's gotten better. You know, I, I've been very very proud of how he's handled himself through camp. Is that an area you mentioned for protection? Is that an area that Izzy and even Vince, but you know, more so Izzy because he's younger. Uh, is that an area he still needs to grow? Yeah, but he's like, you know, 100 times better than he was, you know, last year um, uh, as far as protection goes. So, you know, we feel comfortable. But, you know, it, it, it's nice when you can see 2020, like next week we'll have tape and go, okay, here's who they are. You know, these are the looks you got, and I'm sure we'll see new looks. But um, with not knowing if they're going to be three down or four down, um, and we've practiced both. Um, but, you know, you split your time on what you're doing. 
uh, front-wise and, and protection-wise. So we're ready for it all. How much will you watch the Tennessee game tonight? Well, we have a bonfire. Anybody going to the bonfire tonight? So I'm going to miss, you know. But we'll have a DVR. My kid's got a DVR already. I don't know. I couldn't DVR myself, but they'll have a DVR. So I'll be watching it, yeah. Um, watching it. Have you named the starters yet at middle linebacker, free safety, and kicker? <laughs> <laughs> we have in this room. You'll find out on game day. We have, though, Jerry, yes. You have. Okay. Yeah. So you, I'll bet you knew about at least two or three of those positions before Monday. My own opinion, you think probably. You just want to. Jerry, you got your own opinion. <laughs> you didn't want to. Eric Howitt's Howell, Eric going to start the free safety position. I'll give you that one. But Rashad's going to come right in. We feel great with both of them. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. You mentioned the kicker. I'll let you hang on that one. And middle linebacker. And middle linebacker. We got two good ones there. We'll, we'll see. You I don't want you masked to know. I don't, wouldn't mind if you knew. But, I mean, you they gave us this bogus depth chart. It's college <laughs> football. You mentioned at the start of camp about only having the nine padded practices. Uh, of the things that you're uh, anxious to see, is that one of the like, physicality in a game setting? Is that? One of I mean, things? it's making those plays on a game day at Heinz Field, yes. But I really feel good with the way our kids have tackled, as good as we've tackled. Um, you know, I think the thud periods were good for us because you got to keep your feet moving. You got to you know stay up off the ground and still you know make a tackle. So um, I, I'm not worried about us having. I'm not worried about us tackling. If I was, we'd had you know we'd have had more tackling practices. I want to make sure you know there's a fine line. Get those nine practices and, and just beat the heck out of each other and you know and, and, and get your tackling and all. So you're going with half your guys. So um, I'm happy with where we are and I'm not worried about the tackling. I'm worried about guys making plays and um, but you know we'll be ready to tackle. We'll be physical. How much do you consider this um, you know start of a new season, especially you know, coming off of the pandemic year away? You know, to sort of build some enthusiasm with the program. You're talking about this big donation. Um, you know, just is it feel like there's some, there's it's almost like a new start, even though this is your seventh year because last year was kind of such a wash from such an engagement standpoint. What's the question? Does does it feel like there's some fresh like it's like it's a bit of like a fresh new thing? Like you can re-engage with people that haven't been to a football game in two years now. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't look at that. You know, it's. You know, we, we've been working. We've been working for a long time here um, on this. I mean, since our game got canceled, uh, bowl game, you know, got canceled, whatever. Um, since December, we've been ready for a new season, and we're ready. So um, I don't know if it's a fresh start. It's it's 2021, and we're ready to roll. What time do you guys leave here on a typical game day night? What time do you go home? Game day night. Well, I mean, game week. I'm making sure game week night. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday. You know, this this week is not. No, next week will be a little bit later, but nine thirty, ten o'clock. You know, sometimes you sleep overnight. It just depends on what you want to do. You've yeah. done that here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Except I don't have my pillow anymore. My pillow, my all well, my pillows. I got to get a new pillow set because I haven't stayed yet. My pillow, my comforters, uh, my sheets. Uh, Rodney Hammond, when he got it to camp. Um, he came in my office. He's like, uh, Coach, I don't have any. You know, he had nothing. He didn't have a toothbrush. He got dropped off for college and didn't have anything, uh, which is the first time I was like, shoot. I went right in my, my cupboard there uh, in my office and pulled out. And I said, here you go. I asked him the other day. I said, hey, you still got my pill? You still using it? Oh, yeah, Coach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, good. And what are the emotions for you like on the first game of the season? Emotions? I mean, you, you know, it's like I told our kids, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or this, this morning, you know, there's there's stresses, there's pressures. You know, there's good pressure, bad pressure. Um, but you know, prepared teams. You know, you're, you're going to have butterflies. I mean, you're, you know, I get butterflies. You know, I would I would imagine every player on our team and every staff member is going to be like, oh, let's go. I mean, you get you get nervous. I was actually more nervous on Monday than I am right now, just because you get a good week of practice in. Um, but you know, you naturally get nervous. I mean, uh, for ball games. I mean, I just I get nervous and excited, and you know. But once that first, you know. That first kickoff and that first hit and that first play, you know, you, you calm down, you go. And uh, but it's always get juiced up for it. It's fun. Anything final? Where do you sleep? <laughs> Where do I sleep? When you sleep on the couch over there. <laughs> yeah, I shut the blinds so you can't be walking out there looking. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the coordinator here who slept in his office. He had a mat brought mattress in his office and blankets. Who did? Well, many moons ago. Yeah, many moons before you got here. Yeah.
So, I mean, we've always, you know, that's always happened. So, East Lansing, not as much, but there was a couple nights there. But I only lived two minutes down the road. You know, 25 minute drive home at 10 o'clock. It's like, by the time I get home and then I have to get back here at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's like, why do I waste my time? So, that's the main reason. <laughs>